I've taken over FCS School Eastern Kentucky, and today I'm going to attempt to rebuild the Colonel. I have six challenges I must complete to consider myself successful, but I also have some difficult restrictions I'll be naming shortly, and if I can't complete all six of those challenges before the end of the video, I have to give away $100 to one of you. Anyways, my first restriction is I can only go after three-star recruits or below, and they have to be from Kentucky, Virginia, Tennessee, or West Virginia. Additionally, I can only play three regular season games a year myself, so I have to actually build a stacked roster. And lastly, I only have seven seasons to complete all of these challenges, so this is going to be extremely difficult. Now, these first couple years are mainly just going to end up being recruiting, but that is very important because I have a lot of work to do, and I've already found multiple gyms. I'll definitely make sure to keep you all updated on recruiting, but I feel like it's important I win my first game as a head coach here. And trust me, I know this is Middle Tennessee State Stadium, but I could not get it to work where I had a different one, so we're just gonna have to rock with it. I will say I am enjoying using this quarterback so far, but he's a senior, so we're gonna have to recruit a new one because the guys behind him are atrocious. I am pretty happy that we started out the season playing against another FCS school, and that's because they've made this team seem way better than it actually is. We ended up blowing out Drake by 27 points, and now I can figure out who actually wants to play for us. Well, our first issue is the only quarterback that we could probably land is Andrew Scott, and since he's a 62 overall. All hope is pretty much lost there, but we do have this athlete right here that might have some throwing stats. He's a 69, and this is more than nice because if we can somehow land Danny Shelton, we will be okay at the quarterback position. Under the difficult restrictions I'm working on, this is the best recruiting board I've been able to put together going into week three, and throughout the season, we'll find out if we can land those guys. For now, I am going to sim against FAU, and they're going to beat us by 14, but I have to pick and choose the games I jump into, and that one wouldn't have been worth it. We ended ended up splitting our next two, which I will definitely take. And now it's rivalry week along with the start of conference play. I'm scheduling every recruit that's ready to visit for this game, and the Hilltoppers joined the MAC with us to make sure the divisions were even. Winning this game would help us get off to a good start in completing one of the challenges, which is have a better record versus Western Kentucky, but drops like this are going to hurt us so bad. Fortunately, being the lower overall team hasn't hurt us too much as we are now going to take a lead with this dot. And I love that despite being an FCS school, we have come out ready to compete today. With three minutes remaining, they are getting close to scoring, but we should have had a pick there. That could have been a pick six. Oh well, we still get the ball, and I'm going for a complete money drive. What is that defensive tackle? I know somebody that is 400 pounds is not running at me that fast. This game just doesn't want to see us succeed. This will have to be a perfect throw, and... He drops it. He drops it. We're going to lose because of it. And I just don't want to talk about it at all. We are going to get revenge on them next season. But for now, I'm just proud to say that it looks like we're going to get Danny Shelton. So at least we'll have a quarterback. I'm just going to sim to the end of the year, though. And even though we'd end up going 2-10, and 10, the most important thing was how the recruiting class ended up turning out. And we do have some transfers coming in, but I can only accept the ones from Tennessee and Virginia. So far, 10 players have committed to the program, including Danny Shelton. But I would really love to get Brad Bradley and Adam Shelby, so I'm gonna have to make a splash on them. Well, it looks I did just enough to get both of them, but we are gonna finish with the 91st best class in the country, so I have no clue how I'm ever gonna sign a top 40 class. Our defense honestly had an incredible offseason, and I'm hoping I can bring in a better recruiting class this season. Virginia ended up having so many four stars that I unfortunately am not allowed to go after, but I still think there are some fantastic players coming up in this next recruiting class that I'm hopefully going to be able to land. It turns out that we are projected to finish last in our division again, but hopefully freshman quarterback Danny Shelton can prove all the haters wrong. I am going to sim our first game of the season because I do believe that we can go out and beat Central Arkansas by three points, and that's a very rough showing for Danny Shelton, but he still has four years to develop, and here are all the guys that I think we have a good chance of landing. I am going to sim to the start of MAC conference play, and I'm honestly surprised we started 2-2 two and two again. I am going to go ahead and schedule everybody for a visit this week again against Western Michigan, and I can't stress how important this game is. These are the ones that we have to win if we're ever going to change around the program, and that should be a pick! Are you kidding me? That might be the unluckiest thing I've ever seen. Now they're getting in pressure. Shelton getting out, though. Our new quarterback, and he just got hit. We had a wide-open receiver. If you look around the Eastern Kentucky logo, he was going to be wide open. But instead, we're going to go the entire half without scoring a point, and they're about to be up by 24. We need to get a goal line stop. Come on! I was not expecting to struggle this much to score. 
four. But here we are in the third quarter. This has to be a touchdown and it's just a terrible throw. I feel like we have to go for the fake here if we ever want to have a chance at winning this game. And it might work. It might work. Hold on to it. No, he's short. And we just did not deserve to win this game today. Fortunately, we still had some players commit to the program, including three offensive tackles. So our offensive line should have no issues in the future. We did win last week in a game I simmed. And against Kent State, we're going to win by one. So we could still very well make a MAC championship. Right now, we're tied for first place in the division, which means I have to play this one against Miami, Ohio. I wasn't expecting us to even compete for a conference championship for at least another season or two, especially with a quarterback like that. But we need to win two if we ever want to get an invite to the American, so it would be better to do so now. And our kicker didn't quite have the leg for that last one, but this one is going to be good. The hard part is going to be getting stops on defense, though, and why is he wide open? So far, the computers honestly played better than I have. I mean, that is a good throw, but we're going to be going into the half trailing by two possessions. And here on fourth and 11, we need to pick this up. It's man-to-man -man coverage over there, and he's going to sail the throw. Danny Shelton sold this game for us, and at this point, there's not much we can do. Okay, so we're probably not going to make the MAC championship, but we can still beat our rivals. And after going on a three-game losing streak, we have to win out to make a bowl game. I'm going into this game ready to sweat, and we need to pick this up here. There's an open receiver, and it's an overthrow. I can't wait for Danny Shelton to improve because right now it is so hard to use him in this game, but we cannot fall behind 2-0 in this rivalry series. That is a dot, and we have a chance to end the first half with another touchdown, which we're going to do. It's just going to be extremely hard to outscore them, and we can't have drops like that. I've been dealing with them all day, and I mean, I don't know what else I can really do here. On fourth and eight, Danny Shelton's not going to be fast enough to escape the pressure, and now with about three minutes remaining, it is probably too late to make a comeback, but getting the two-point conversion here could make it interesting, and that is is what we're gonna do. We just need one stop to get the ball back, and on third and five, I usured all that perfectly. I usured it all perfectly. Pick it! Pick it! Let's go! That's the stop we needed. Keep on going. We are right back in this football game. I cannot believe I thought this game was over. We're about to score a touchdown, and the big question is gonna end up being if we're able to get the two-point conversion. Obviously, we still need to get in, but we're gonna do it right here, and I lied. It is fourth and goal. We gotta punch this in. We're going to do so, so it all comes down to this. Will we send the game into overtime? We are going to throw an interception. <laughs> Words cannot express how disappointed I am right now, but at least we still have three timeouts. One minute, 37 seconds later. We just need to stop him one more time. You've got to be kidding me. He broke free from that? And I cannot believe they just got that first down. Now we're behind by two games in the series, and I am disappointed with how the season is ending, but at least we improved from how we did last year. Danny Shelton definitely needs to work to get this completion percentage up, but at least we have a star at wide receiver in Jaden Higgins, and I'm just praying that I don't get fired. Well, it turns out I've kept my job for now, but I probably need to get this team to a bowl game, and I'm hoping this is enough to land us a top 40 class. So it's time for the moment of truth, and we're not even close. These restrictions are making everything extremely difficult, and we brought in a new quarterback, and we really need some cornerbacks, so I'm gonna move Danny Shelton to corner, and we're gonna rely on Joe Wallace. This is the best overall team I've had at Eastern Kentucky, and this is our first year that we are gonna have a chance to take down Kentucky and complete that challenge. We beat Central Arkansas by three to open up the season again, and I just hope this is the year that we actually land a top 40 recruiting class. Conference play is starting early, where we're going to win on the road at Ball State, and we're undefeated going into Kroger Field. Pulling off an upset today would be a huge statement for us, but that is going to be pretty difficult to do. We do have 25 seconds before the half that I feel like we should be able to take advantage of, and if we can at least get a field goal, we'll only be down by a possession. Jaden Higgins continues to get open, so I'm going to keep delivering dots to him, and he holds on to this one too, getting us all the way down to the 15, and Joe Wallace is clearly the better quarterback. That was a great switch, and why'd I even say anything? Next time, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, because that stupid turnover is going to make this game so much harder to win. But you know what? We're still in it, and maybe this is going to end up being our season. With three minutes left, we have the ball still trailing by three, and Wallace is going to get out here. He's not the fastest, but he'll scramble for a bit, and all we need is a touchdown on this drive to hopefully pull off the crazy upset. This is a very important third and 11. There's an open receiver. McFadden holds on to it and our drive stays alive. We are going to milk all clock that we can take and hopefully we can go out with a win. There's no quarterback spy. I'm just going to scramble for the first. And at this point, all the pressure's on us. 12 seconds left. The running back's nope. open. He missed it. He just sold on that throw. Trust me. I know I should be smart and just take this game to overtime, but I want to beat Kentucky. I want to beat Kentucky. Get into the end zone. That's it. We're going to upset the Wildcats. This is the biggest win in Eastern Kentucky school history and that's going to complete the first challenge of the video. This could end up being a
fantastic season for the Colonels. Come on, boys. Let's beat Old Dominion. Are you serious? We need to bounce back against Bowling Green. I scheduled everyone to visit for this week, and we're going to win by 12. That win alone secured eight different recruits for us, including 74 overall cornerback Todd Hemphill. He's got himself 94 speed, and he's going to make a great duo with Danny Shelton in the future. This week on the road at Kent State, they haven't won a game yet, so I do feel comfortable simming this one, and we somehow lose by 32. That doesn't even make any sense. But making the conference championship just got 10 times harder. If we're going to win it, we're going to have to beat Western Kentucky and Ohio, so I have to sim this one against the Red Hawks. We are hosting them, and we're going to win by 7. I don't know how we did it with a 38% completion percentage, but I'm not complaining, and I'm going to advance to the Western Kentucky game. Well, it looks like we split against Akron and Buffalo, so we're going to need some help to win the division, but we have yet to beat our rivals, the Hilltoppers, so I would love to do that today. <laughs> And you have got to love a good snow game because it doesn't get much better than this. This is awesome. We're going to end our first drive with a touchdown. And you know what? Maybe it's our thing to play in the snow. We seem to be doing a great job. As to end the first quarter, we're going to be going up by 14. Since we're already trailing 0-2 to in the series, it's very important we go out and beat our rivals today. And as we're about to take a 21-0 lead here, I think it's going to happen. I'm also assuming this is the first time Eastern Kentucky has beat a ranked school in school history. So what a result to pretty much end our season. The Hilltoppers have to lose to Ohio if we're going to make the MAC championship, and they're not going to do so, which means next season we're going to have to go out and play even better. We ended the year with a big win over Cincinnati and the Bobcats, and Joe Wallace definitely has a bright future here. It's going to stink to lose two of the most important seniors on this roster, though, so we'll see how year four goes, but first we're playing in the Arizona Bowl. This is a chance for us to win our first bowl game. I'm not going to jump in, though, and we're going to lose by 15. I don't really care because I'm just glad I did enough to keep my job, and I think this is the year we might might actually get a top 40 recruiting class. We landed all four of those guys, so it's time for the moment of truth. With all three stars, where are we ranked? It's going to be 31st. I told you all that this was going to be a very special group of guys, and that's going to knock off the second challenge of the video. To my surprise as well, Chandler Harper started out as a 65, but when I move him to free safety, he's an 80 overall. Joe Burgess also started as a 63, but when I move him to halfback, he's a 76. The team just continues to improve in the offseason, and Joe Wallace is already an 80 overall as a sophomore. Going into season four, we're projected to finish top three in our division, and I'm going to sim our first few games because all I'm worried about is winning the match. I'm not thrilled we lost two of our first three, but you know what? All that really matters is the conference results, and on the road at Central Michigan, we're going to win by 10. Next up is winless Ball State, and last year we lost to a team that hadn't won a game yet. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, and thank goodness we just beat them. Recruiting is off to a fantastic start, and between 73 Luke Saria, 76 Ty Miller, and 75 Jake Burr, this class is going to set up the defense for the rest of this dynasty. Now, I am going to keep simming because I do believe that these games are winnable ones that I shouldn't have to jump into, but at Miami, Ohio, I feel like I need to step in. It's important to note that Raman Brown at halfback did transfer in to start this dynasty, and I think he's only a junior, so we might rely on him for the next few years. We need a new star on this offense, and it looks like he's stepping up, but we're also going to need to get some defensive stops, and that route was killer right there, but I played great defense, and you know what? I think this is going to be our season to win the match. With a minute left in the third quarter, we are looking to take an 18-point lead here, and we're going to do so, which ended up leading to us getting a massive win over the Red Hawks on the road, and the next game circled on our schedule will have to be the Hilltoppers. We ended up beating both Akron and Buffalo this season, and the race in our division was about to heat up. Western Kentucky was a top 25 team again, and this is a huge opportunity for the program because a win today might actually get us into the top 25 for the first time in school history. By the time there was about three minutes remaining, we had the ball. It was is tied and we're looking to take control of the game here, but that's a sack. Now it's third and 23 and I feel like we just need a bailout. They sent a blitz. No one's open, and that's another sack. I cannot remember the last time I saw it be 4th and 29 in a football game, but now we're going to have to stop them on defense, and come on. This time, I'm going to do my best to try to get the ball out in time, and so far, so good. Another wide-open receiver, which is great, because all we need is a field goal to win this game. It's all going to come down to an ice kick, and will Nations be able to do it? It's going through the uprights, and thank goodness we have beat the Hilltoppers again, tying up our series with them at 2-2. Two to two. I'm not going to lie, this result against Cincinnati doesn't matter at all. I don't care that we just lost because we are one game away from making the MAC championship. All we have to do is win at home against Ohio, but they are a top 25 team right now, so that could end up being easier said than done. We're going to have to make sure we make very few mistakes, and speaking of mistakes, car accidents happen all the time, and you need to know what you would do if you found yourself in one. Obviously, the first thing you have to do is make sure
sure you're okay. And then you need to get a police report and make sure you contact your insurance. But after that, you have got to get legal representation. And that is super easy to do with Morgan & Morgan because with only eight clicks on your phone, you're able to submit a claim and have a lawyer review your case. Morgan & Morgan has definitely modernized the injury law process. So if you're ever injured in an accident, know that you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Over 3 million people call them every year in a time of need because you can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without having to leave your couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Bordeaux or dial pound law, that is pound 529 from your cell phone. And now let's get back to the action. I do trust Ramen Brown to get in here and for good reason, which helped us a lot because the end of the first half, we're going to be up by seven. It looks like there's going to be someone wide open in the seam. That's another touchdown. And I'm not quite sure how Ohio is 10 and one this season because they've done nothing to impress me. I got to say, it feels good to finally win our division in the MAC, especially after the first two seasons. But now it's time to see if we can actually win a conference championship. It turns out we weren't the only undefeated team to not lose a game in the MAC, and I just hope we can take down Western Michigan. Remember, we have to win two of these conference championships to get an invite to the American, which is a challenge for the video, so we probably need to win this one no matter what. And I don't love that we're starting out this one down by 14, but we should at least be able to get in here with Wallace's legs. At halftime, we are trailing by 17. There's still plenty of time left, so I'm not going to start stressing yet, and this is exactly why. We're about to get it within 10, and after we do that, all we're going to need is a couple more defensive stops. I'm telling you all, I've been locked in this third quarter, and we have a wide open tight end to bring it within three. This game is not over, and on third down, the running back is not going to be open. We're going to pick it off. Everything has gone our way here in the second half, and now they're pressing our wide receivers. That is a terrible decision to make. With all the momentum swinging our way, I don't know how we could lose this game. At this point, I would love to take the entire clock with me before we end up scoring a field goal or a touchdown for the win, but I just don't think that's going to be possible to do. It's going to be like a third and three, and I really hope we pick this up because I really want to go for it on fourth down, but that just feels like the wrong decision. I'm going to go ahead, kick the field goal, send it to overtime, and I should have been more aggressive there. Fortunately, they still have not scored in a very long time, so I do think we're going to be okay. But we are going to have to get a defensive stop here. And on third and 11, there's a wide open receiver. And it's third and three. They go with the handoff. No way, no one was there to stop him. What is going on? I have a feeling we're going to end up trading touchdowns back and forth for a long time. Two thousand years later. Honestly, I don't even know what routes these are. I'm just going to take off. Please do not fumble. What a broken tackle. I'm going to be honest, boys. I missed all of my reads. I'm just going to hope he can get in here, and he does. I feel like time and time again, we have gotten so close to stopping them, and it's fourth and nine. This could actually be our chance. Please, nobody get a lucky route bounce. That's a missed throw, and we have finally won a MAC championship. Joe Wall Wallace had a fantastic game, and this conference championship trophy was well-deserved. I've now completed half of the video's challenges, but we still have a long way to go to finish everything, and I cannot wait to see how Ramen Brown does in his senior year. I also have to point out how dominant of a season tight end Reese Atkins had, and hopefully he can end his college career with a quick lane bowl win over Wisconsin, which he can. I went from almost getting fired a couple of seasons ago to signing a seven-year extension, and because of how well I've done, I've just gotten two incredible coordinators. This incoming recruiting class wasn't top 40, but there's still 23 stars in it. So I think we're going to end up being just fine for the future. future. Former cornerback Danny Shelton is now the best corner on this roster, and I'm hoping we can win back-to-back -back MAC championships. I'm honestly confused how Western is favored to win the division again, but you know what? Here in year five, we're just going to have to prove all of our haters wrong. We're starting off against North Dakota State. We're going to win by 34. And I'm just going to sim these two in-state games because I really want to get to conference play. Thank goodness we ended up beating the Cardinals. And on the road at 0-2 UK, we're going to win by seven. Recruiting's honestly just gotten easier the better we've gotten. And surely there is no way that we go into the factory and lose at Eastern Michigan. We're going to win by 14. And now I got to hop into one because Central Michigan is undefeated. I don't know if we're going to be able to beat them. I'm just throwing up a bomb here. And what a catch. If he can outrun people that easy, I'm going to have to continue to look his way. And right here, I'm going to throw it over the linebacker. I'm hoping we can get into the end zone here. Get that ball out. Get that ball out. And oh my gosh, he's huge. I didn't realize we were working with such a thick fullback, but theoretically it should make him hard to bring down. But I guess not because we are stuck taking our three here and our kicker is just way too good. With about three minutes left, Central Michigan is going to take the lead. So you know what that means. We need one clutch drive and I feel like we can probably pull that off, especially because they're pressing the fastest receiver in the conference. Brian Joseph is just a little bit better than everybody else and he has 200 receiving yards today. That's insane. We're taking our lead back and I'm ready to seal this game on defense with one more stop, which we're 
we're gonna get. All I have to do is run out the rest of the game clock now, and it feels good to improve to 5-0. and I'm proud to announce with that result, we just got ranked for the first time, and I honestly feel pretty comfortable simming to the Western Kentucky game. Now it's time for a moment of truth. How did we end up doing? I just simmed it all, and we are number five in the country. We could legitimately end up making the playoffs, but wait, why is Michigan on the schedule? That is so annoying. We're gonna probably end up losing to them, but oh well, the most important thing is that we beat Western Kentucky, and that'll secure our spot in the MAC championship, which could allow us to move up to the American Conference. I feel like I've done a pretty decent job at rebuilding Eastern Kentucky so far, but evidently not, because with time ticking down in the first half, we are trailing by 21. I'm just gonna try to throw this up, and that's another interception, and it's fair to say that was a rough defensive first half. I don't understand how we've played so bad, but at least Raymond Brown's gonna get into the end zone here. Under five minutes now, things aren't looking great, but we're gonna get a nice dot, and don't count us out yet, because we're about to score again. Running back, wide open, Brown, takes it for 15, takes it for more, keeps on going. And now, it is a one possession game. I would love to get a stop here. It's third down and we get the sack. We have somehow clutched up in the fourth, and we just need to score a touchdown. Also, I think it's pretty cool I'm controlling Danny Shelton here. He just threw a killer block, and now he's gonna throw another one for us. We're gonna get it outside with Mayhew. Mayhew is gonna take it. Mayhew's gonna go all the way down to the end zone. What a turnaround. Do not doubt the Colonels. We've just gone on like a 28-3 run, and now we just need to hold Western Kentucky on defense. It would sure be devastating to blow our lead after all of that coming back, but I'm feeling confident, and my user for this entire drive is going to be our old quarterback. I feel like we have everything clamped up here. Wait, wait, how was that guy wide open? Are you kidding me? I don't even want to talk about it. I don't know what our deep safety was doing, but I'm going to try to do the same thing to them. Come on, come on, come on, Joseph. Keep on going. We're down to the Western Kentucky 15. We're in field goal range. We can at least send it to overtime, but I want to get a touchdown. This should be the easiest thing to punch in in the world. Let's go, Brown. Oh no, oh no. I took off quite a bit of clock there. That might've been a mistake, but we have an open receiver. I'm going to run it in and Joe Wallace clutches up. If they bomb us again on this play, I promise I'll cry. We need to take a lead in the series and that's a fumble. That's game. We have pulled off the miracle comeback. We're going to be undefeated going into the big house, but they're a 99 overall team and this place is packed. I have to say, I think our defense is our weakness because it has not been holding up recently. This wide receiver screen is terrible. What is going on? And I just hope it does not get out of hand fast. We've worked way too hard to get blown out by Michigan. Come on. I just want to at least get into the end zone. I'm going to throw it up to our fastest receiver. He outruns Matt corners and he's going to outrun the Wolverines corner. Brian Joseph just gave us the lifeline that we might have needed, and it would have been awesome if we were ever able to get a stop on Michigan, but instead, we're gonna get blown out, and I honestly have no hope at this point. I'm just gonna throw it up, and of course he comes down with it. Just like last week, maybe we're set for a legendary comeback. Nobody's been able to get open besides one receiver, and I'm just gonna feed him, and we're gonna see what we're able to do. He has 200 yards today, so that's something, and I'm just gonna go right back to him, but it's a bad throw. It's a shame that we're not gonna stay undefeated, but you know what? Next year, I'm gonna make sure that Michigan isn't on the schedule. They shouldn't have even been on the schedule this year. I don't know how how it happened, and I'm just gonna have to accept we're not good enough to win a championship yet. However, we've had a very good season against Ohio. We're gonna somehow lose by five, but fortunately, we still hold the tiebreaker in the conference. We're headed into the MAC championship on a two-game losing streak, but as long as we hold on to our early lead and we win this game, which would get us an invite into the American Conference, I'd consider this season a successful one. We're clearly a superior opponent compared to most of our conference, and I honestly have no clue how Toledo made it to this game. It's the end of the third quarter, and they're still not gonna score and we've just done a fantastic job. Now they're gonna get in right there, but we already have the backups in and this one is completely over. It feels great to take home another MAC championship and now we're gonna be in the American Conference next season. Considering he was less than a couple hundred votes away from winning the Heisman, I cannot wait to see what Joe Wallace does in his senior season. His number one target will also be coming back for one more year. And if I'm being honest, I don't really care about the bowl games. They don't mean much for the program unless we're in the playoffs. We're gonna lose to Rutgers. But who cares because we're coming off back-to-back -back 11 wins seasons, and we're only losing six players from last year's team, while adding a lot more depth to replace them. Some of the best players going into season six have to be names that you'll remember, like Joe Wallace, Brad Bradley, and Chandler Harper, and hopefully we do well in the American Conference. We're projected to be the best team in our new division, and this season's starting with Rivalry Week. If we're able to win today, we'll have a better record than them in this video, and I honestly don't see any way that we lose. This team is way too good, and we cannot start our new season in the American Conference with a bad start. I honestly feel bad for the Hilltoppers because it's just been too easy to score, and for the first time, this rivalry game really wasn't much of a competition. Now we only have one more challenge left in the video, and hopefully I make the right decision on the other two games to jump into. Now against FCS School North Dakota State, we came in as an FCS school, now we're going to be throttling them, and I honestly feel comfortable 
comfortable simming against Kentucky too, because they just haven't been very good in this dynasty. For the first time all video, I feel comfortable simming pretty much every game because of how good we are. And just by looking at team overalls, it looks like Temple and ECU are going to be our two hardest games. So I'm just going to advance to there and hope that we win. Well, it looks like none of those four games were even close. And hang on, USF's ranked 18? Were their only loss, but they couldn't stop Joe Wallace. And it looks like East Carolina's the only threat to our undefeated run. I guess I can go ahead and sim this Temple game. They haven't had as good of a season as they were supposed to. We win by 31. And now it's time to play against the team that could end up giving us some trouble. I feel like we should be okay against them. I just want to go undefeated so we can hopefully make the college football playoffs a year sooner than expected. And it's just starting to dawn on me that this season could literally be a championship year. I guess it'll really just come down to if we can compete with the bigger schools when it comes to the time. And I honestly don't know how we wouldn't be able to do so since we're playing this well. I want to bring a championship back home to Kentucky. And this was the least stressful win I have had to ever get. They scored a good amount, but they just couldn't stop us. From what I've seen, I should have no concern simming these last two games. Against Navy, it was a little close, but we won by 10 and our final regular season game against Charlotte is going to be another win. That'll make us the number two team in the country. And Joe Wallace is so close to winning the Heisman, but he'll have to play well in the American Conference Championship. FAU went seven and five this year, so I really don't see them putting up a fight today, but their school hasn't seen any success since their basketball team lost in the final four, so maybe they'll be hungry. I'm going to be honest, I was not expecting this to be a tie game with two minutes remaining. We need to get a defensive stop. And they have a pretty solid offense for someone that didn't have faith in them. I regret it now after failing to stop the run all day, but now that they're trying to pass, it's a little bit different. We're locking up here. That should be an interception. Come on. At least they're forced to punt us the ball back. And this is the exact situation I want to be in. I think we're going to end up being fine. Get the ball out. And maybe things won't be so fine because we could not get the ball out there. I almost want to throw it deep, but I decided not to. Wallace makes a guy miss, gets down to the 20. And I made sure I drained the clock just in case we don't pick up this third down. We're going to need a big play though. He's open in the seam and he's going to get down to the 42. That just went exactly how we needed it to. We only need a few more yards. No one beat the press, but there's also not a quarterback spy out here. We're going to slide down at the 20, and it should not have been this close, but we are going to kick the game-winning field goal, getting us an American Conference Championship in our first season there. Joe Wallace even ended up winning the Heisman with 57 total touchdowns, and considering he led the country in passing by over 500 yards, it makes sense. He was also once again our number one running threat, and I can't believe how well he spread out the ball this season. We also had three different defensive players win season awards. And isn't it crazy that Danny Shelton is playing cornerback for us when as a freshman, we thought he was the future quarterback of this program. I feel like this team is ready for the college football playoffs and I hope we can beat Oregon in this semifinal matchup. It is dumping pretty hard, but I'm hoping that doesn't affect how we end up doing today. The option seems to be working so far. Burgess is going to get down to about the 45 and we have had our way so far on offense. Hopefully that continues. It looks like we're going to have a wide open receiver there. Please don't be a pick. That's a catch. And of course it is Brian Joseph that comes down with it. Obviously, these are not ideal conditions for a long 57 yarder like this, but it's still going to be good. And I am sending a blitz here on third and one. I don't want them to get anything and they're not going to. I don't want to say this has been a perfect start, but nothing's gone wrong for us so far. And look who is wide open. Brian Joseph gets down and he's going to burn the cornerback on him, shed him off his tackle, giving us a 17 to zero lead. This is not the same team that got destroyed by Michigan last year. They're playing so much better and that's nowhere. Who would have thought Eastern Kentucky in the playoffs doing very well against Oregon. There's a mismatch there. Look at the size mismatch. That's an easy catch. I don't know why they have like a 5'8 corner on a 6'4 receiver, but it isn't going to work. And if I'm being honest, I thought we were going to get put out in this game and have to come back next season to try to win it all, but they're playing so well, we might do it this year. I mean, Oregon is actually a few overalls worse than us, which is crazy. It shows how well I've built this team, but I wasn't expecting to blow them out. And I think the reason for it is their offense has just been terrible. It's taken them this long to get down the field. Field, and they honestly might not even do anything with it. We're going to get another stop, forcing them into third and goal where everything's pretty much locked up. That should have been a pick. And it's safe to say we're going on to the national championship. Who could have imagined this result? I honestly still don't believe it myself, but our quarterback had an incredible game and hopefully he can do the same against Georgia. It all comes down to this and it is very important that we go ahead and score on this first drive. Joe Burgess making a couple guys miss there and he has been fantastic for a junior. That's a terrible read though. 
are you serious? We cannot start the championship with an interception. That literally sets them up to score already, and that's what they're going to do. After that one, we cannot have any more mistakes. That was terrible. But you know what? No more excuses. Let's go out and win. After playing for a little bit longer, one thing I've noticed is when you play against Georgia, you have got to play perfectly. So we cannot have any more mistakes on offense because we got to outscore them. That drop could end up working because we're not going to get in here. And what a perfect example of the mistakes I was talking about. I couldn't get the throw out. That should have been a touchdown, but instead we get screwed. And now they're going to pick up another first. We've made it so far and now it's not looking good for us. That read option got us. If we're going to come back from this 21 point deficit, I'm going to have to be risky. And it stinks that we don't get ball to start the third quarter. I have played way too many hours of this dynasty to lose now. And I highly doubt that our receivers beat the press here, but they actually do. That's a huge gain. So you know what? It is far from over and look who's going to be wide open. Brad Bradley. Georgia fans are witnessing the choke. They already witnessed it as Falcons fans against Tom Brady. And now it's going to be against Eastern Kentucky because on this drive, we have the ability to tie it up and Wallace is going to get us out to the 35. The momentum swings and changes of this game have been incredible because now we're actually going to be doing well. Burgess is getting a nice first down. And with five minutes left in the game, we've just been trading touchdowns back and forth. This third down is our opportunity to get the ball back with a chance to take a lead though. And I feel like everything's in a box. No way that they catch this. Are you kidding me? I was about to say. And I feel like if we manage the clock well, this could be the last drive of the game. That's a beautiful pass right there. Giving us at least another three plays. I'm going to pitch it here to Burgess. He's going to make a few guys miss. And right now, the game clock is on our side. A little bit over two minutes left to go. We need a first down, though. Making this a huge third and two. We're going with the run again, and the blocks are going to work out. I'm practically shaking. We have worked so hard to get ourselves into this position. I don't know what that play was, but I think it's all going to come down to one iced kick. Georgia didn't take a time out. I don't know why. The kick is up. It's good. And Eastern Kentucky is national champions. I ended up completing all six of the challenges in today's video. And let me know in the comments which school I should go and rebuild next.